We have Arvind Savant uh, joining us from the UBT Sena camp. Uh, Savanji, jo verdict aya hai, how would you receive this? No more electoral bonds for political parties to end cash. See, uh, um, primarily, I will welcome this idea. But then uh, there must be different aspects about it. The, from 2019, how much money has been collected by the different parties, particularly BJP, that should be announced and that should be made to clear from where they got the money and from who they got the money. Because that cannot be kept, kept as a private one or secret one. Secondly, uh, while doing so, uh, what has happened, what will happen, whatever the money which has been collected earlier, will it be used or will it not be allowed to use in the election? Because they are already uh, having sufficient, I mean more than sufficient, super saturated with the electoral bond, the only party is BJP. Now, if they, if they are allowed to use the money, it means you are preventing others to collect the money. Hmm. So, therefore, there are two aspects of it. You, uh, you, you are doing a good thing, but you are preventing the smaller parties to collect it. And you are allowing them to whatever they have collected. They are more than, uh, they are super saturated with the fight. And they can use the Has money. Has the UBT SENA received any money from electoral bonds, Arvind Savant? Uh, would you be able to confirm? Pardon? Has the UBT Sena received any money through electoral bonds? Oh, we, we also buy our bond, but very, I mean, this is meager, meager, meager amount, hmm. considering the amount which they got. So, I mean, it's like Himalayan uh, collection for the, for the BJP. In PM Care Fund, again a Himalayan collection, hmm. which is also not to be declared, which is not to be uh, declared to the public. So that is again a fraud, a big fraud, big scam, you can say where that money is being used. So these are the major questions of the country. And so uh, in, in principle, okay, it's a good thing. We have a big idea. But then what about the money which has been collected earlier also? So you are preventing the other people. You are super saturated. You don't need it. In the monetization also, you have seen it. How the later on the cooperative banks were stopped. When Gujarat's cooperative bank collected 745 crores in a day, hmm. All right. In a single day, they collected 750 crores in a Gujarat cooperative bank. Cooperative, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We then heard you. Prevented other and, and that's precisely what the Supreme Court has uh, closely observed, that this is a violation of voters' rights extensively, a fundamental violation. And going specifically to what the Supreme Court, it says uh, also that this is also a violation of in fact, a right to information under Article 19, the fact that many of these electoral bonds have come in through unanimous accounts, uh, it's also a violation for, of the Right to Information Act under Article 19. Ajay yes. Alok, sir, Arvind Savan, thank you very much for joining us. Ajay Alok of the BJP joins us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Alok, we're looking at a big verdict coming in from the Supreme Court. The biggest beneficiary of uh, electoral bonds is the BJP. How would you receive this verdict? All right, we, we're going to try and patch his connection again. Nalini, if you're with us, that, that uh, million-dollar question, all that money that's already come in through electoral bonds, will the political parties be able to encash it? Well, Nabila, let me quickly explain to you how the process works. Once the electoral bond has been purchased by the donor from the SBI and given to a political party, the political party has 15 days' time to encash that electoral bond. So all of those electoral bonds that have already been encashed by the political parties, of course, that money cannot be returned because then that money is used by the political parties for its funding. So keeping that in okay. mind, what the Supreme Court said... again, uh, to cut you short, a quick word from Sanjay Hegde, a lawyer joining us on the phone line. Mr. Sanjay Hegde, a big verdict coming in, a unanimous one from the Supreme Court. No more issuance of electoral bonds. Political parties have already made their cash. The verdict has come in now, two months ahead of Lok Sabha elections. How would you see this? I would see this as a historic judgment, uh, not only because it is unanimous, because it is so rare that when a government invests political capital in any uh, economic measure, that the courts strike it down. The last time it happened was possibly 50 years ago in the bank nationalization cases. This is a significant judgment which will, be, uh, which will have its place in constitutional history and will be studied for 
uh, near, at least a couple of generations in the future. I think with this is a historic day. The Supreme Court has basically said that big money cannot influence our democracy. And it cannot do so in an anonymous fashion. So we are looking at the Supreme Court uh, in 2019 holding back uh, on the verdict or rather saying that they are not going to stop the issuance of the electoral bonds. Five years later, it's taken for the CJI under D.Y. Chandrachud to announce that this is a violation, a fundamental violation of voters' rights. Uh, do you believe that this is a uh, judgment slightly delayed? See, there is a Persian proverb, I, I, I'd leave it at that. Uh, it may have been delayed, and every government uh, measure or legislation is deemed to be constitutional unless it is held to be unconstitutional by a court of law. Uh, uh, the matters had been referred to a constitution bench. Constitution benches were rarely uh, 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 brought about by chief justices. We, we had two years of COVID. Finally, uh, a constitution bench, having heard it, has unanimously declared it to be unconstitutional. And if you go by a lot of the, the dialogues on media and social media earlier, not many people anticipated this verdict. All right. So uh, you're saying Derai Durustai, it's finally here. The verdict uh, is two months ahead of elections. So the, the, the question here still remains, what about the money that's already been made? There's a direction by the Supreme Court to RBI to declare all electoral bonds that have come in since 2019. Uh, but they're still, and as per our uh, legal correspondent, Nalini, she says that all that money that, had to that came in have mostly already been encashed. So parties that had to make their money have already made it. Yes, they have made it. But the Supreme Court has said that all these details have to be disclosed now to the Election Commission, and the Election Commission will make it public on a website. So we will exactly know which big corporate or its associate bought electoral bonds and how they contributed to policy decisions later. The quid pro quo uh, to that extent will soon be uh, made known. And there could be other consequences later. Sanjay Hegde, if you could, uh, for, in layman terms, if you could simplify for us, how does this really violate the fundamental rights of voters? We, our democracy is based on one man, one vote, one vote, one value. Now, if a voter uh, is influenced by a whole host of money power and, and money which is anonymous. Uh, then the electoral system itself gets skewed. That is manifestly arbitrary, according to the Supreme Court judgment today. Okay. The a party with deeper pockets have a, a, a better hand at influencing voters. Thanks very much, Sanjay Hegde, for joining us on this.